Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Rainy Day Love, and I'm sipping on some peach tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel, and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting, and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, Mars black, fire red, and deep yellow. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing, and then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight round synthetic brush, and I have a number three round synthetic brush, and I refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process, and of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna paint a background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are blue, white, and black. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a nice kind of medium tone, soft grayish blue, and we're gonna use that for the entire background of the painting. So I've already pre-mixed myself my color, and I will show you how I got there. So this is the color that I'm going for. How I got to that was I used about equal parts of blue and white, and then just a little bit of black. So what I'm in essence doing is I'm adding gray to my ultramarine blue, because gray is made with black and white, and I'm adding that to my ultramarine blue so I desaturate the blue, and I come up with this nice kind of, I, I like to call it like a rainy kind of blue. So once I've got that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the entire canvas with this color. I'm gonna be using predominantly a left to right type of brush stroke just so I can get a nice even coat, but you could certainly use any type of brush stroke that you want. Like I know when I go along the sides, I'll, I'll most likely do a vertical type of brush stroke, but to get the paint nice and even and have a nice um, consistent type of uh, layer to the paint, I'll usually use the same or a similar brush stroke throughout the whole um, area. So if I'm doing this entire canvas, I like to keep my brush stroke consistent. So I would, for me, usually do a left to right brush stroke as opposed to doing like circles on one side and a left to right on the other side. So just keeping that brush stroke nice and consistent will give you a nice cohesive and even layer throughout the, throughout the whole um, canvas, especially when you're doing a nice flat background like this. And then I'm gonna just bring it all the way to the edges. You could even paint the exterior edges of the canvas. That's gonna make your painting look nice and complete and that you paid the same amount of attention all around the painting that you did on the front of it, all around your project, I should say. And it makes it look nice and professional looking and you may not feel the need to put a frame around it once it's done. So once I've got this on here, what I like to do is just kind of go back and forth so this way I have a nice level layer of paint. So sometimes when you're painting um, a base coat like this, you might get some high spots or some thick spots or you might miss some spots. So this going back and forth just helps me to get it all nice and level. And then we're gonna be using this same brush 
for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the out of focus city. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, brown, and my custom blue. Maybe a little bit of white too, but not sure on that part yet. So I do recommend before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long sip if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm going to be creating a the illusion of a city off in the distance through a foggy, rainy window. <laughs> so I don't need to do much detail, and I really wanna keep all of my edges soft and out of focus. So as I'm doing this, I'm gonna be using this kind of brush, and I'm gonna be doing a lot of kind of scrubbing type of brush strokes to get the, um, the height or the shape of my buildings in place, but I'm going to make sure that the edges of them are really nice and soft. And then I'm gonna kinda of get it to transition down into um, this bottom region in through here. So as I do this, I'm not gonna have a lot of paint on my brush. My safe color is gonna be my custom blue. So if I run into trouble and I'm like, oh my God, that's too dark, that's too much, I can always pick up some of my background blue and use that to kind of dull it down or get it to soften up a little bit. So I'm gonna start with a very little bit of brown and black on my brush, like very little. I can even just wipe it off on the side of my palette to make sure that I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. I'm gonna start over on the right hand side. I'm gonna give myself a couple of markers so that way I don't make my city too big or too small. So on the right hand side, I'm gonna find myself about halfway up my canvas. I'm gonna go maybe an inch or two above that and then just kind of come in just a little bit and make myself a little bit of a marker. So I'll know that that's kind of as high as I want my buildings on that side. Then in the center of my canvas, left to right, I'm gonna find myself about the center and then I think I'm gonna maybe just be right in the center, <laughs> maybe down just a little bit. I'm just gonna have them at different heights and maybe this one's gonna be just a little bit further down. And then over on this left-hand side, I'm gonna go a little bit higher than this one. So wherever that is on the left-hand side, I'm gonna come up maybe a couple of inches and give myself a little bit of a marker here. These are gonna be my high buildings on the sides and then I'll just kind of give myself some shorter buildings in through here. So I've got my gray, or my uh, brown and black on my brush, not a lot, and I'm just gonna start kind of rubbing it into my canvas. So I've got these um, rectangle type of shapes throughout this. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more because my paint I had so little on there, it kind of dried out on me. So I picked up a little bit more of my black and my brown, and then I'm just gonna kind of come over and maybe give myself the tops of some of these buildings and you can really have fun with the um, the structure of them. You don't have to make them exactly as mine. You can have some kind of coming over like this. You can have them coming down a little bit further. I'm giving myself this um, soft bottom to it so that way it ends up blending in with the background and with the, um, the colors that we're gonna be putting down below what I'm gonna do right now so I can soften these a little bit more before I go on is I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my background blue on my dirty brush and this is gonna get me to just kind of make sure that these are soft enough and that they've got out of focus edges to them. That's the trick here. I don't want any super firm edges. So I picked up a little bit of my background blue in order to make sure that I've got these really soft edges in through here. And again, I'm not, oh, that was a little bit too much pain. <laughs> using my paper towel to wipe it off. I'm not um, looking to get this to be photorealistic or anything like that. I just want it to look like it's off in the distance and it is in the rain and we're just seeing this faint illusion of it. So again, just picking up a little bit of my brown and black so I can just continue on my quest and again, wiping it off on my paper towel, maybe give myself a couple of little taller buildings in through here. And again, yours doesn't have to look exactly as mine. I'm just going for something that is gonna give me the illusion of a city off in the distance uh, behind that, um, 
the rainy, the rainy window, maybe a little bit more black so it ends up showing up. We don't want it to be so faint that we can't see it. I'm gonna give myself some softness down at the bottom with a little bit of a circular scrubbing type of technique. I think I'm gonna square this top off on that building a little bit. And again, you don't have to, you can put more buildings as you're going through this. If you feel like you have like a flat straight spot, like I felt like I did right there, just add a couple of more pieces that come up and that's gonna give me, again, that illusion of all these different buildings. I'm gonna go ahead and do some on this left-hand side so I can get my cityscape to kind of come up in through here maybe one in through here and i think for me as i'm doing something like this when i wanted to go out of focus i'm trying not to be terribly consistent with i have a building here and then i need an exact one there i just am giving it this chaotic type of um structure so it's not too formulaic this isn't intended to be modeled after any specific city maybe there's a tall skyscraper over on this side if this is just intended to be something nice and representational and loose that we can use as a nice backdrop behind our rainy window and perhaps our sentimental message that might be written on the window and then I'm just going to bring this down I think I'm going to pick up a little bit more brown just so I can get a little bit more color in through here and then again I'm going to soften the edges like I did over on that right with my um, background gray or background blue so I'm going to pick up a little bit of that on my dirty brush and then I'm just going to make sure that all of my edges are as soft as I want so I can in essence kind of just overlap them with this dry brush type of technique where I'm not again creating any firm detail and even if you do go too detailed that's okay you can hide it with or disguise it or soften it when we go to do the um the rain on the window so you you don't don't feel like as you're doing this if yours isn't as soft looking as mine is yet that you that you didn't do it correctly because we've got all kinds of elements that we're going to be putting on top that will help us to um, get that out of focus look to it. And then once you've got this done, let it sit for a minute. If you feel like you want to do anything more, like if you want to bring a little, I just picked up a little bit more uh, black and brown just to deepen the tone of these a little bit. If you want to do anything more to yours, feel free to do so. We're going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can just wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting our out of focus city lights and our fogginess on the window. <laughs> so I'm gonna combine these steps or these, um, these objects that we're going to be painting because they're going to be using the same technique and they're just kind of overlapping each other. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm going to use are my custom blue, white, yellow, and red. And if I need to or want to use any other colors, I'll let you know. So again, I'm just looking for some out of focus illusions behind this foggy glass, which is going to be some street lights or um, lights from buildings, maybe they're close up, maybe this window is on a bus, or maybe it's in somebody's apartment, and way off in the distance there's just these soft, circular type of shapes that are going to represent lights way off in the distance, or, you know, car lights, or something along that line. So, in order to do that, I'm going to be creating these circular type of shapes that are gonna have a real, again, softness to them with maybe a little bit of color, maybe a little bit of yellow or a little bit of red. But where I'm gonna first start is I'm gonna be starting with my background blue and white in order to give myself some bright spots where these lights are gonna be as well as a fogginess on this window. So I'm going to be picking up my background gray or blue, I can't, it's a grayish blue, so I may call it blue or gray both times, and white at the same time. And I'm going to kind of designate where I want these lights to go, so or the ones that I'm gonna have color in them. So I'm gonna have maybe one up in through here. The lightness that I'm creating with 
using the white plus my background color, this is gonna allow whatever colors I put on top of it to be a little bit brighter because they're gonna have a, that white or lightness to them. Maybe I'll have one over in through here and I let myself kind of allow these um, the edges to be really soft and just kind of scrub it out so it has um, those soft edges to it. Maybe a little bit more white on one versus another one. So maybe I've got a little bit brighter one in through here. They can be all different kinds of sizes. So maybe I have a big one in through here and a little one over here. Maybe they don't all get color in them when we go to put color on the canvas. But right now I'm just kind of designating some, they can even overlap your city. So maybe I put one in through here and this is gonna overlap maybe the bottom of the city. So know that because these are just, you know, off in the distance, they can be, you know, on the top of a building, they can be crossing over, they can really have any um, location that you want them to. Maybe I'll have one down in through here. Maybe I've got some maybe a little one over in through here. And again, they can be small, they can be big, whatever size you want them to be is totally fine. I like to also make sure that I have my paper towel handy so that way I can control the quantity of paint on my brush. So you'll find that a lot of times I have got my paper towel in my hand just ready to um, adjust that quantity of paint. And then maybe, I think down at the bottom I want a lot of light down here. So I'm gonna put my um, background gray plus white along the bottom and I'm gonna put the illusion of a, uh, some soft, lots of lights maybe down at the bottom in through here. Maybe we'll add some yellow or something to it in a little bit. So I'm just gonna kind of overlap this right in, in front of my um, the bottom of my city down in through here. And again, this is white plus my, my background custom bluish gray. So now that I've got this on here, I'm gonna build a little bit of um, the color on the lights, whatever lights that I, I want to be incorporated in through here. So I am going to, without washing my brush, I'm gonna start picking up either yellow or red or a combination thereof. So I've got just a tiny bit, I mean just itty bitty tiny bit of yellow on my brush. Maybe I've got, and because I used um, the background bluish gray, some of these with my yellow might end up being a little bit green because yellow and blue is gonna make green. And if that's not appealing to you, you can always add a little bit more white as an underlayer to it and that'll help it look a little bit more yellow as opposed to greenish. So I've got my touch of my um, yellow on there and again, just kind of swirl it out, make sure it's nice and as faint as I want. Maybe I've got a little bit up in through here. I'm gonna add just a touch more white to my brush just to get this to blend in and get a little bit brighter in through there. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit more of yellow and just a little bit of white. I think I'm gonna use them both at the same time. Maybe we'll have one in through here. And again, yours can be really bright or really subtle. It's gonna be up to you where the intensity of these lights that are off in the distance end up. That's gonna be your preference. If you want them super bright or super subtle, you can even add ones where you didn't have them before like I just did. Um, so if you're feeling like you want one somewhere else, just add it. That's the beauty of this. I'm gonna put a little bit more of that yellow and white, get some of this vibrancy down at the bottom of my canvas. Maybe there's a whole bunch of illuminated fog or something at the bottom so you can again make this into whatever you want so again this is just a tiny bit of yellow and white giving myself some brightness down at the bottom i'm picking up some of my background gray right now just to, or bluish gray just to make sure that this works itself in and looks like it's um, blended in enough and then I'm gonna add some red and or red and yellow into some of those lights. So this is looking pretty good to me. So I'm going to now pick up just a tiny bit of red and again, just an itty bitty bit on the corner of my brush. And this is gonna help me get maybe a couple of red ones in here. So I think maybe I want one maybe in through here, maybe one in through here. And then again, I put it on there and then I just uh, put my brush in a circular type of motion. 
I have the remnants of everything else on my brush of the background color and of yellow. So this is going to allow me to get this very out of focus look. I think I want this one a little orange. So I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of yellow and put it on top of that red. That'll give me a nice kind of orange appearance to it. So if you want that uh, an orange look, red and yellow is going to make orange. So you can just really have fun with that. I think I want a couple of reddish ones over in through here. So just very, very faint, maybe a little bit on this one in through here. I'm trying not to overdo it because I, I really want the this to just look out of focus. But right now I am kind of flipping back and forth between my red, yellow and white to get these these lights to be as bright as I want them. You can always put a little bit bright, little extra lightness in the center of them. But again, try not to make them too in focus because that will take the focus off of the other stuff that you're looking to do. So that's looking pretty good to me. So now I'm just gonna add some fog on the window. So this is going to be created with my background color plus white. So similar to what I did at the bottom, I want to incorporate that softness throughout the rest of it. So I'm going to, without washing my brush, I'm going to pick up white plus my background uh, bluish gray. And this is where you can give the illusion of either rain, you can do some kind of coming down, you can do a circular type of motion, you can also add a touch of water on your brush. So this is going to allow you to have almost like this um, soft effect on top of everything else that you've done. So you don't necessarily want to scrub it too hard if you've got a, if you've got a lot of um, water on your on your mixture because that may end up lifting up the other um, aspects or the other details because your paint is so fresh at this point. But you can certainly bring it in front of anything that you want. So if I want a little bit coming in front of these lights, I can bring it down there. If I wanted some in front of my buildings, I don't want to take away the detail on my buildings, but if I want to give the illusion of maybe some rain kind of coming straight down, I can give the directional brush strokes to kind of insinuate that that may be happening. But I like the darkness of the, um, of the background color, so I don't necessarily want to make this too, too light. Um, but like down and through here, if I want there to be a little bit more fog, I can certainly give myself that scrubbing and then maybe bring up a couple of directional brush strokes to insinuate that there is um, some rain kind of just dripping down that window. And then you just fiddle with it as much as you want. If you've done anything that you feel is too much, you can bring back some of your background color and that will allow you to um, just bring back that, that bluish gray and you can adjust it. Like if this one, this one seems a little bit bright to me, so I just picked up a little bit of my bluish gray and I just magically make it go away. So you can certainly do that with yours as well. And then we're gonna be using our piece of chalk for the next step. So once you've got this done, fiddle with it as much as you want and then uh, take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our message. I'm gonna be using my piece of chalk. I do recommend that you make sure that your canvas is dry for this step as well, because it's always easier to draw on a dry canvas than it is to draw on a wet canvas. <laughs> so you can really make any message that you want. You can write, I miss you, or I, you know, put initials or put whatever message that you want. I'm just gonna write, I heart you, because just quite a few people in my in my life that I love. So I'm gonna put that. Um, and I want it to kind of look like, you know, just a person wrote on the window. So I'm gonna have kind of curved edges to my letters and it's gonna be messy. It's not gonna be super organized because I think when people write messages in windows, they're not really conscious about being super neat. So I'm just gonna have my, I'm gonna do maybe my letter I in through here. So I'm gonna have my little rounded edges I'm going to bring this in through here. And again, you know, if you want it to be kind of representational of a real finger, you can always put your finger up to see maybe like how wide your, your window making mark would be. Actually, I think this, I want this to be down a little bit lower so I can have it 
ha have that light behind it so maybe something like this beautiful part about chalk is you can always <laughs> erase it and you know make corrections if you want to for my heart part i'm going to have this maybe i want this to be pretty darn big so let's go over in through here and then over in through here and again you can have yours say whatever you want you can have it as big or as small as you want i'm going to give this part you know again as if a finger had made this we'll bring this maybe down in through here you can connect the bottom of your heart if you want to or not whatever you're feeling is totally fine and then i'll put a small u over on this side maybe we'll get this to go over in through here maybe we'll bump this out a little bit farther like that and then in through here and that's all i'm going to do for my for my outlining step you can certainly modify yours make it say whatever you want we're going to use our medium brush for the next step so you can put your piece of chalk away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint our letters i'm going to be using my medium brush the colors that i'm going to use are my background blue black white yellow and red and if i need to use and maybe a little brown too and if i need to use any other colors i'll let you know so what i'm going to do is i'm in essence going to be saturating the colors that are behind these letters so if i was to wipe away the fog on my window everything behind it would become more in focus so i'm going to and I don't need it to be exactly um, lined up perfectly with the background objects, but let's say this section in here, maybe even coming down here, I'm going to make it really dark in essence to represent this back stuff almost coming more in focus or being the colors being saturated. Where I'm up in the blue, I'm actually going to be making that a lighter color. So you'll see what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to tackle the dark areas that would represent maybe seeing the buildings um, behind it. And then I'll do the lighter colors um, representing the light blue. And then we'll add the brightness from the lights that we'll see too. So I'm going to start with a little bit of black. I am going to use brown so that way I have um, kind of a little bit of a transparency and again I don't need it to line up perfectly with these buildings so I'm actually going to just bring this section of darkness maybe up in through here and then I'm going to bring it all the way down to I'm going to pick up a little bit more brown so I've got a little bit more fluidity but it's not super duper black black and I'm going to bring this all the way down to my um, to the bottom in through here. You could certainly pick up some of your uh, background bluish gray if you felt that that would um, help with your color choices. You could make it a little bit more transparent too, which would mean you could put a little bit more liquid medium on your brush, but I'm just going to be using the black and brown. That's going to help me through my process. It'll make it, the brown tends to be a little bit transparent, so that helps me out. Um, so that's going to be that section. I'm going to I don't know why I did that one first. I could have started over here. I'm going to bring, because I've got buildings behind here, I'm going to bring a nice dark section maybe up in through here at an angle. And you can always, like I said, use a little bit of water or liquid medium on your brush to get the fluidity um, and get yourself some nice, some nice uh, clean lines along the edges of your sections. And you can bump right in or erase your chalk on this step as well and if you don't erase it all you can certainly um, after you're done painting you can um, come back through and erase your your chalk mark with a little bit of water or just um, a cloth or something like that we'll get that we'll take care of that uh, i think i'm going to actually have a little dark section up here on this letter as well and again doesn't have to match up perfectly with the buildings because this is something that is really far away so the the building shape might get 
distorted in this um, section of the window or whatever we're, we're seeing. Over on this side, I'm going to bring this, again, just reloading my brush with black and brown. I think I'm gonna have this dark section maybe coming up a little bit taller, maybe kind of, mm, maybe, maybe I'll be in through here, something like that. And then I'm gonna, as I get down towards, I'm gonna bring this right over this light because we're gonna enhance that in a minute, but let me just bring it right over the light. And you can see since I'm using a little bit of water on my brush, you can see that color right through it. So this is allowing me to have a little bit of that transparency. And it's also, I'm gonna use a little bit of water on my brush down here too, so I can get that, um, the lightness, a little bit of the transition of the lightness from the color behind it. But we're gonna, I'm gonna put, um, some additional information on in here in a minute. So that's looking pretty good for that one. I'm gonna do all of my U in a dark color here. So again, black, brown, and a little bit of water are on my brush. That's not dark enough. So let's bring in a little bit more black on my brush. And this is one of those steps that, you know, you might find that you really love the impact of the, the dark buildings being represented in this um, in these letters. And in which case you could totally go almost black with, um, with your color in through here. And that's gonna add some good contrast and some good drama to it. Um, but if you're, if you're feeling like, you, you know, maybe you want it a little bit on the lighter side, then just use a little bit more water or liquid medium in your, in your brush. And that's going to allow it to have the translucency and see the, um, the colors behind it. So that's looking pretty good to me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put the light areas on and then we'll come back and incorporate some, some colors. Um, some saturated colors from the lights in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna just pre-mix myself a little bit lighter blue. So I'm gonna take my background blue and add some white to it. So this is gonna give me just a lighter version. It's enhancing what I feel is that, that color behind it. And I'm going, I'm making this one lighter and whereas the buildings I made darker. I was looking at a couple of different references of window lettering and this is what I was finding you could do um, to get that illusion to happen. So. I've got a lighter version of my blue, so or my background blue, so I'm just gonna bring this up in through here and bring it right up to these other marks that I've made in these letters. And again, this doesn't have to be a clean color. You can you can use a little bit of water in it and have the, the variations to um, the, the color so it doesn't just look like a flat color. So I just put a little bit of water on my brush so you can see what I'm talking about. So if I have a little bit of water or liquid medium on my brush, I'm gonna have the some spots are gonna be a little bit more see-through and that's gonna allow you to have variations within this, knowing that it is a foggy window and that there could be spots that are you're, you're able to see through them more than others. That would make it look a little bit more realistic than maybe just a flat color. So that's gonna to be totally up to you. But again, we're gonna be adding um, some colors in it in just a second, but I wanted to get this main um, base coat of it on here first, so that way when we add the, the illusion of the lights being enhanced in here, we've got a great place to start. So I'm just, again, bringing this right into here, going up to my chalk mark, and again, if I don't cover my whole chalk mark right now, I'm okay with that. So now that I have that, all I need to do is kind of enhance um, the other colors that I'm seeing behind my letters. So for me, that's gonna be all these little lights that we have. So again, it doesn't have to match up one for one, but if you do have some lights that are right behind there, then that would be great. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And like over in through here, this one back here was made with red, yellow, and white. So I can take my red and yellow. I'm gonna start with a little bit of red on my brush, just a tiny bit. And I'm going to get this spot within my lettering to enhance that color. You can also pull it out a little bit past 
your, your lettering as well, as long as it's got that translucency or transparency to it. So something like that will get that light to pop a little bit more. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of yellow and put a little bit of yellow in through there. So again, this is just kind of taking what was behind and just um, enhancing it a bit. I don't really have any lights behind this one, but I think I wanna add a little bit of color to it. So I have the red and yellow on my brush. So let's, I'm just gonna pretend like it is there's a light back here. <laughs> I want to, you can add the color wherever you want to. It may be reflecting from somewhere else. I just feel that it, it's a neat effect to have. Um, over here, I've got yellow and white. So I'm washing and drying my brush. Oops, and, and hitting my easel with my hand. <laughs> I'm picking up a little bit of my yellow. And this is, again, you can see how it's just richening up that color and it's allowing for it to have this really cool effect on this, um, on this written letter. I'm picking up a tiny bit of white paint so I can get a little bit of a bright spot over on what would be the part that is illuminated the most on the actual light itself. So you can play with those visual effects. If you know that this is the center of that light, you can certainly, in this um, window, or in the lettering, you can enhance that part a little bit with um, giving it the illusion of it being the brightest in through there. And then I've got a couple in through here. I've got a little red one up in through here. Again, it's so out of focus. So I'm just gonna pick up a tiny bit of red paint on my brush and I'm gonna just kind of rub it over in through this area. Again, just to give me that illusion that this is um, enhancing it a bit more and we can see it just a bit more, maybe a little bit more. Well, let's get bold and put a little bit more in through there. So it's gonna give us a great illusion in through here and then We'll see if I have any other ones. And I want to bring it out as big as that footprint if I can. If there is, you know, if I'm kind of going one for one, if I'm, you know, just kind of arbitrarily putting it somewhere, then you can make it whatever size you want. Maybe a little bit of white too, just to give it a little little bright spot in the in the center and through there. Yeah, there we go. That looks more like a light. And we've got some in through here. They don't line up properly, but I think I definitely want, I've got red and white on my brush right now. I want a little bit in through here. I think I'm gonna put um, this one maybe, or maybe this one I'm gonna put over here. I'm, I want something over on this side. So I just picked up a little bit of yellow on my brush. We're gonna put this one over in through here. I have a little fly on my canvas. <laughs> so we got yellow in through here. And again, it doesn't have to match up. Whatever you're feeling is you know somewhere where you wanna put color, it's going to give it the illusion because it's rain, you know, and it can it can be steered a little bit and skewed. I just put a little bit of um, red, yellow, and white on my brush just to give me a little bit more of this color in through here. And then again, just kind of enhancing it. And because it's on a lighter background, it's gonna naturally just look brighter. I just put a little bit more white on my brush. And then I think I'm gonna make this one in through here. So this again is just my uh, red, yellow, and white, but I think I want a touch more yellow on this one. So I just picked up a little bit more yellow. And again, just have fun with it. This is, this is that part where you just get to, you know, explore making these fun, these fun effects on it. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just kind of go with it, whatever is visually appealing to you. I just picked up a little bit of red so we could get to this spot over in through here. And then once I've got this done, I'm probably just gonna let it dry for a minute and see if there's any additional things I would want to do, like maybe get rid of all of my chalk marks, which I can do that with a little bit of paint or um, excuse me, water or a little brush. I just picked up a touch of white. And again, so I'm just flip-flopping between white, yellow, and red to get these illuminating values on in through here, but you can certainly do whatever colors that you would like. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. This is just yellow and white to enhance this a little bit more. Um, and this is what I'm, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just kind of let it dry, see if it dries in the value that I want. And if I want it brighter or darker, I will just kind of keep enhancing it. And then I will be um, putting my medium brush away, taking out my small brush and getting ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting some raindrops. I'm going to use my small brush. The colors I'm using are black, white, my background blue, um, maybe even some of that lighter blue that we created, red and yellow. And of course, I'll call out the colors as I'm using them. I'm going to be doing my raindrops in a two-step process, which means I'm going to be doing all of the, uh, I'm going to kind of lay them out first with a, with a dark area or almost an outline to them. And then I'm going to come back and add all of the reflective colors to them. So when doing raindrops or water or something liquid like this that has a lot of reflective qualities in it, I tend to steer painters into doing very little or minimal work because you don't need to overpaint them. The, the, that piece of water or liquid is reflecting all of the colors around it so you don't have to think I've got to paint this whole thing because if it sees the color behind it you're already halfway done so you just need to kind of outline it and then maybe put in a couple of marks color marks to represent the the surrounding colors so similarly to how we did the letters where I've got some darkness um, represented that saturating color as well as the light representing you know the saturated color behind it as well that's kind of what's going to happen to these water drops I'm gonna show you one from start to finish and then um, I will do them all in my two-step process so I'm starting with black and water on my brush and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna give myself I'm gonna start usually at the top of my shape and with a kind of a thicker line or thicker colored area and then when I bring it down you can do it in any kind of shape that you want it can be like a teardrop type of a shape it can be kind of a circular type of a shape so you can really give them different shapes once you've got the, and you don't even have to go all the way around it you saw that I kind of partially did it so if I want just a little tiny one I can just go partially and you don't have to do the whole thing so I'll do that to all of them then I'm going to wash and dry my brush and now I'm going to start putting in reflective colors so I know that I want maybe my background blue in here so I just picked up some of my background blue maybe put a little reflective quality in through there maybe a little bit in through here and now maybe I've even got some of these lights in through here so I'd wash and dry my brush maybe pick up a little bit of yellow and white and maybe we've got a little reflective quality of the of the light that's near it and that's really all I have to do if you wanted to sparkle a little bit more bring in a bit more white into it so you don't have to do a ton to get the effect of a luminescent piece of water so I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna start over and I'm gonna do um, all of my dark areas so this is black plus water on my brush and I'm gonna do lots of them I'm gonna start maybe up at the top here I'm gonna have some bigger ones so you can certainly feel free to make as many as you want I'm gonna have them pretty circular um, or a round type of shape but they can be oval they can be like teardroppy you can have tons of little kind of marks so don't feel like you have to do yours exactly the same size or shape as mine I'm gonna have some coming off the top of my canvas so that way it looks like you know we we're immersed in this scenery um, try not to make them too consistent so what that means is just give them different sizes give them different um, kind of placement so maybe I have you know a bigger one over in through here and you know maybe I, maybe I've got a couple in through here maybe there's a couple of little tiny ones kind of going up when you're doing the smaller ones you don't necessarily have to make that whole shape to it uh, maybe you just make a little dark mark that we can build with a light um, reflection on top of it maybe I've got a couple kind of coming down in through here maybe I've got one on top of here maybe I've got a big one that just kind of flows over there and you can see you know as I'm going through this I, maybe I've got one in front of um, here you know 
You can put them really kind of wherever you want. Maybe I've even got them where the finger went like this. They've got kind of drag marks where the, where the water has kind of um, been accentuated by, by that finger. Maybe there's some concentrated moisture marks uh, along the along where the finger was. So have fun with putting them wherever you want. I'm just continuing to put them everywhere. I just kind of started at the right side of my canvas and now I'm just gonna kind of pop down a whole bunch elsewhere. Maybe I've got some big ones down in through here. And again, they can be all kinds of sizes and, and shapes. You, you know, as I go through this process, some of mine become more round, some of them become more of a teardrop kind of shape. Some of them have bigger areas at the top with that darkness, which is what I'm kind of intending to do. But as I go through the process, maybe some of them aren't exactly that way. So, you know, you, it, they're rain they're you know intended to be raindrops or maybe they're the the fog from the window is you know just kind of making little drip marks down the window they can overlap one another maybe i've got this one kind of overlapping another one over in through there but i'm trying not to be too terribly systematic so sometimes i uh, you know i'll find myself wanting to just go a little bit faster because for me, when I go faster, sometimes my intuition will kick in as opposed to me really trying to think too hard about it. And I find, I kind of find that when I let my intuition kick in and just kind of do the things that, that my hand feels are, are more natural, that's seemingly to me when I, when I can come up with more natural looking marks and you know thoughts that are that are happening on the canvas because i'm not sitting there thinking mm, mm, i think i think one would look good here and i think one would look good here my you know i just kind of say okay well it's rain i'm going to have some little ones i'm going to have some big ones you know and just let my let my hand kind of dictate and just kind of run around the canvas uh, allowing me to get these more kind of organic marks that um, you know that mother nature would create and not Michelle's hand you know <laughs> which sometimes is one of the hardest things to do you know allowing for just your your intuitive nature to steer the ship <laughs> because our brains are like, no, 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 let me do it, let me decide. But again, sometimes, especially when you're doing something like this where, you know, there's no way all of these, these droplets would be placed perfectly. So, so let, let your, your, your hand just do the work for you. Just, you know, make a ton of little tiny dots here and there. And so I'm feeling like I've got plenty on here, maybe, maybe one or two up in through here. So that's going to be my footprint. Now I'm just going to wash and dry my brush and kind of carry the, um, the colors around. So I'm going to pick up some of my background blue because I, uh, it, it will only make sense for the background blue to be, um, represented in places that don't have it. So like if I put it here, that's not going to matter because it's already there. So if I want it to be represented like in one of these darker ones down in through here, I can just pop in a little bit of that background color. And I'm putting the reflective notes kind of more towards the bottom of the, um, of the drop. So that way, it will look as if the, um, of course that one I put all the way up towards the top. <laughs> that way it'll look like the, the um, as the drop is falling, it's the contour of it is catching those um, reflective qualities at more so at the bottom than it is at the top. And the top kind of looks shadowed um, or shaded with that dark area that we've, that we've put. So that's good on that color. And now I'm gonna bring in a little bit of um, that lighter blue that we created for here. So this is um, my background blue and white. Um, and this, this lighter tone is the tone that I can use up in these darker one, or up in this, um, up in the top area where the background blue is the dominant color. 
I'm using this to enhance it like we did on the lettering. So this is the light blue that we used um, on the lettering. And again, I'm just kind of finding the, my, um, my drops and giving them a little bit of this additional color to them. And I can even put it in these guys over here. I'm not, again, doing too much, just kind of sitting here and mark making, which is one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> it's so cathartic when I'm just sitting here, just, you know, going through the canvas saying, oh, let's just make polka dots or let's just, you know, make some fun little marks and I can just kind of, again, let my, let my brush kind of steer the ship. I'm looking for all of my, my dark, um, m m that, the um, path that I took with my, uh, with my dark mark. So now I'm just doing that on the opposing side of the drop with my light marks. And then once I've got these, I can go ahead and I'll put a couple of reflections with the yellow and red, and then we'll pop in a couple of bright white twinkles and then we'll be done. So again, you don't need to do a whole lot. It's just a matter of controlling yourself and your brush so you don't overdo it. That was kind of extra light, so no worries. We're gonna be putting light stuff on there anyways. Um, so this is looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna um, find a couple that I wanna put some uh, of the, the um, luminescent color. Oh, I missed these guys right here. Let's put, um, I'm gonna just br bring in a little bit of white for these guys in through here because they're right on top of that lightness. So I just put some white on my brush. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, pick up a little bit of yellow and white and put some of the uh, near, some of the bubbles or the drops that are near like a yellow light, I can put yellow and white in there. So again, I'm just reflecting the colors of things that are around it in the atmosphere. I don't need to do this to all of them, just you know, ones that are near some of these uh, light areas or the luminescent areas. I missed these guys, so they're gonna get some of this now that I'm here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. Uh, these guys can get a little bit up and through here. I'm gonna pick up some red and white. So now I'm going red and white and I'm gonna give a couple of these guys some red reflections, the ones that are near some of these red lights. So that's how you're gonna make this look a little bit more realistic is just imposing these um, these reflections within these and you don't even need to do much just a little a little dabble do ya now? I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna pick up some white to give a final twinkle to my um, To my raindrop so I have white on my brush and I'm just gonna kind of give them these little tiny bright twinkles and again you don't have to do it to all of them but if you can give some of them just a little kind of swipe. I'm going again more towards the bottom of those um, of those drops, but you could certainly make yours wherever you want. And then once you've got this done, we have one last little step. This is where I find, oh, you missed one. <laughs> like I missed this one here. So that one's just getting a light mark. But again, that's the beautiful part because I was not overly thinking about it. I'm just letting my brush kind of have fun and enjoy the process as much as I do. So when I do that, there are often times that I don't, I don't execute things perfectly, but I'm okay with that. Like my painterly eye allows me to be imperfect when I'm doing especially stuff like this. So if you can get yourself to that place too, it does provide a little bit of freedom when you're painting and you're okay, you know, it can, tends to be a, a little bit less stressful of a process if you can get yourself to be okay with non-perfect things. And then once you've got this done, we're gonna um, wash and dry this brush and we will use it for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so we are onto the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm going bottom, bottom left on this one with black paint. You could certainly sign yours anywhere you'd like. I like to use my initials for my signature, but you could certainly use your first name or the date or a symbol 
or whatever you'd like for your identify and mark is totally fine because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like to. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very inspirational image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.